memories before we uh, give you the blue album. Weezer started in Los Angeles. <laughs> Pretty good up there. That's nice. And uh, we lived on Stoner Avenue. And that was the <laughs> beginning of a long series of things that were kind of appropriate. There's a uh, 226 Amherst Avenue where uh, the guys uh, had the garage that you hear about in the garage. It inside the Blue Album when you open up the booklet. Remember booklets? Those things called CDs? Remember those? <laughs> There's inside. When you travel inside the house, you see it in the Say It Ain't So video. You, you travel in, you smell something bad, you realize it's the kitchen, but you keep going. Straight ahead, it's the little garage, a one-car garage. There it is, converted. Many bands use that after Weezer moved out, but I think uh, the landlords finally got wise to what was going on. Back in the old days, we played places like Club Dump. <laughs> A far cry from Stubbs Barbecue, I'll tell you. But you know, Club Dump later turned into the Viper Room, thanks to Johnny Depp. And it's still a far cry from Stubbs Barbecue, I must say. There's another old flyer, a place is called English Acid. I don't know if people dropped acid there, but it, it, they probably did. In this ad, I took a uh, personal taser ad and turned it into a uh, little story about a woman trying to get to the Weezer concert. She might have been the only fan at that point in 1992, though. Anyway, she knocks the dude out and she gets to go. There's an early set list, not too much different than what you're about to see. 1993 there. And now here's an early, uh, the first review of Weezer's show ever, 1992. This is the earliest time we got into print. We zoom in here. Another band that was trying far too hard to prove something or other was Weezer. This band is probably the most blatant Nirvana wannabe that I've seen yet. And while a slower song at the front end of there said, had its moments, the remaining tunes left much to be desired. Next slide. Well, you know what? Why the hell are they complaining? It was free! <laughs> Moving on. There's some of our, uh, the bands we used to play with back then. The Black Market Flowers and El Magnifico. Both are uh, long done, but they uh, were great, great bands. Black Market Flowers was the other band that Michael and Carly, our good fan club girls, rest in peace. They first befriended them, and Black Market Flowers also has a song called Michael and Carly. You should go search for it on YouTube. Next slide. Michael and Carly made us this great box. It's a replica box from the, uh, the Kiss movie, uh, was it Phantom of the Park? Where they get those talismans? Well, they remade them just for a Weezer. It's pretty freaking cool. Those are, those are in storage right now. We can't lose those, because they are the source of all the band's luck. Next slide. There's our friend Pat Finn, sporting the very first Weezer t-shirt. We made 20 copies. If you ever see one of those on eBay, you better bid, because it might be your only chance. Next slide. There's Rick Ocasek at Electric Lady Studios during the recording of the Blue Album. Very cool, pretty much the coolest guy we've ever known. And you know, the Cars have a new album out right now, and it's great, so you might want to check it out. Here they are, an electric lady, uh, working on God knows what, but uh, it made it to the album, whatever it was. Next slide. Here they are, here's Rivers on a, uh, a Hammond organ. Uh, I think he was considering that for, for Holiday? Maybe it is on Holiday, I can't remember. Anyway, moving on. Now here's uh, Brian Bell's audition tape for getting into Weezer during the making of the Blue Album. Please enjoy this fine recording compliments of Radio Shack and Brian Bell. I hope to see you in New York soon. Thank you, Brian. And he made it. He's in. We like him. <laughs> now he, here's the first photo of Brian as a member. Isn't he happy? Look how happy he is. Look how happy that guy is. 
<laughs> Next slide. Here they are working after the Blue Album was finished, rehearsing for the tours that we eventually went on forever. And uh, there's Bacchus, our mascot. Uh, the very first uh, drum head that had Bacchus on it. That's the one you see in the uh, inside the Blue Album. And in speaking of the Blue Album, we tried to come up with a good look for the cover. This wasn't it. <laughs> Toilets, not gonna work. Got a little closer here, but there was gang signs going on. Couldn't have that. Finally, we're getting somewhere. Closer. <laughs> then we had to have a logo. Took a long time to figure that one out, too. And here's River's idea for the Blue Album cover. And you know what? He, he nailed it first try. I tried to make it a little more, you know, whatever, but really, River's had it already. And finally, we put it out, and immediately people started accusing us of ripping off the Feelies, who we'd never heard of until that day. Actually, we were ripping off that Beach Boys cassette in the middle. <laughs> the Feelies are great, though. No, we just didn't know about them. Anyway, once we had uh, real artwork, we, our flyers suddenly took a, a much more professional tone. There's uh, that dog who we uh, do many shows with, a great band from L.A. Seek out their old albums, they're just great. Next slide. There's, we needed a van to tour. There it was, we called it the Enforcer. It looked like the A-Team van. We got it for $5,000 from a dude in Fontana, California, who looked exactly like Momar Gaddafi. Exactly, it was weird. But look what a badass van we had. <laughs> But it broke down a lot, and we renamed it Betsy after that. There we are, Betsy, getting ready. Getting ready to go, heading out. There's Rivers loading up the U-Haul uh, trailer. We uh, now have a few more staff members to take care of some things like that. Not that he wouldn't do it, but he's just kind of busy these days. Next slide. Here we are loading in the very first day we had a bus. We said goodbye to Betsy. It was kind of sad, but we were kind of stoked to have a bus, too. Here's some uh, Polaroids we shot on one of our early tours in that bus. Opening for live. I think here in... Uh, I think we played Liberty Lunch with live here. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good show, too. Next slide. And oh, even well, the Polaroid kind of broke, so it got kind of abstract and weird after a while. Spin Magazine didn't want those ones. <laughs> Moving on. I did a sketch of Rivers in, uh, I think, Europe somewhere. I thought, oh, that's a nice little sketch, so I saved it. And there's a nice poster from Europe. Pretty much the coolest poster I've ever seen of Weezer. So screen. I saved one, of course. Next slide. And... Well, that's about it, folks. We are about to uh, see the blue album.